then we are told here, else what shall they do or accomplish which are baptized for the dead if the dead rise not at all? Why are they then baptized for the dead? Now, what have we said before that the word baptism means? It means identification. And he's not talking about water baptism at all. The one baptism is the baptism of the Holy Spirit that we know anything about. But Paul now is using the word baptize in an altogether different way. Notice what he says. Else what shall they accomplish which are baptized for the dead if the dead rise not at all? Why are they then identified for the dead? And now listen to him. Why stand we in jeopardy every hour? I protest by your rejoicing, which I have in Christ Jesus, our Lord, I die daily. Now, Paul says that if Christ be not raised from the dead, and now that he's raised from the dead, we were identified with him, he says in the fifth of Romans, baptized into his death. We've been raised now in newness of life, and we're baptized into a living Christ today. We know him no longer after the flesh. We're joined to a living Christ. Now, if that's not true, and we're not baptized to him, that is, identified with him, then we're pretty foolish to make the sacrifices we've made down here and stand in jeopardy every hour, Paul says. Why, he says, I die daily. I am in danger of death constantly for Christ's sake. Now he says, if after the manner of man I fought with beasts at Ephesus, what advantage it me if the dead rise not? That is, why should I be put in a lion's cage if Christ didn't rise from the dead? I'm identified, I'm baptized into his death, identified as a dead man because I'm joined to a living Christ. That's what he's talking about here. And let's don't bring it down to some little simple service that would be practically meaningless. Let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. Now, he says, the reason I'm identified as a dead man is because of that. Now, if Christ be not risen, then I ought to adopt the hedonistic philosophy of the Epicureans and say, eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow we die. Now, he says, be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. You get the wrong information, you're going to act wrong. Awake to righteousness and sin not. For some have not the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. Verse 35. But some man will say, how are the dead raised up? Two questions are here, the how and the what. And we need to back up and look at this a moment. Men fail to distinguish the difference between the resurrection of the body and the immortality of the soul. Plato and Cicero, they argue for the immortality of the soul. Now, Paul is arguing for the resurrection of the body. The Sadducees, they denied any life after death. And Christ answered them. He says, he's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He's the God of the living and not of the dead. And Paul answered those who denied the resurrection of the body. He answered it, as we've seen, in the resurrection of Christ. His body was raised up. Now, how can a body that dies and a body that's raised up be the same? Well, Paul says nature demonstrates that they are not identical. They are the same, but not identical. The dead are raised up with what body? Well, the bodies change elements every eight years. Our bodies, we're told, change the elements. And the answer to the first question, the how here, that just as a grain of wheat falls into the ground, it comes up. 